Hi everyone, my name is Corinne Nelson and I'm going to teach a Dutch oven class. But before I start, I'm going to give a little intro of who I am because we haven't seen each other for a while and, and there's lots of new people in the, in the neighborhood. My family and I moved here 20 years ago. I have five children and they've all flown from the nest and I have six grandchildren. One of my children is Tessie and she is doing the filming. Hi everyone! And she has brought Eli, who's also assisting. We're gonna do a chicken and vegetable Dutch oven and what qualifies me to teach this is that I love cast iron. And so I'll show you some of the cast iron that I have. I have fry pans and this little thin fry pan, the eagle skewer pan that we use every uh, general conference. I have a couple Dutch ovens that are size 10, 12, and I have this cute little one that's size 8. I, I also just this year bought this nice one, but I don't even like it as well. Yeah, it's pretty, but it's already chipped a couple times. Cast iron will last forever. Little Eli will be inheriting some of my cast iron. It's um, easy to clean when it's seasoned well. You don't get plastic in your food when you're using it. Plus, it just gives you that warm, nostalgic feeling when you're cooking in it. It keeps the um, heat even. We use the Dutch oven a lot, but I mostly use it on Sundays, and I just take this Dutch oven and put it in my oven. And um, before church, when we used to go to church, um, we just fill it up with roast and vegetables or whatever, and then when we came home from church, it was all ready. So it's a great cooking tool. So let's get started. And, and we're gonna get started by um, putting charcoal briquettes in the chimney. Here's my chimney. It helps the briquettes cook a little faster. Um, the first thing you do is put some newspaper or any kind of paper in the bottom. I just have a bunch of telephone books I saved and I just do a light twist. general rule of thumb is to use twice as many briquettes as the size of your Dutch oven. So my Dutch oven is a size 12, so I'm going to use 24. And instead of counting them out, I've just put a line here somewhere, and I just fill it up to that line. Okay, then you take a match. Lighting the seduced paper, and um, it will take about 15 minutes, and then the coals will be ready to um, heat up the Dutch oven. So first, I put in potatoes about one level, just a, one layer, and it's about 10 medium or small potatoes, and on top of that carrots. I would usually do more carrots than this, but this is all I had. And I don't, um, I like the, the long carrots that you have to peel the best. I think they taste the best. And one onion. And then I put some salt and pepper on. And then chicken. butter. Put some butter on the top because butter makes everything better. And you can put more pepper and salt on at this point and you can add some other uh, herbs if you want. Okay, now we're going to put this Dutch oven on the coals. So I have some other coals that are ready since we're doing a one take here, mostly a one take. The rule of thumb with coals is that um, if you're going to simmer, put two thirds of the coals that you have on the bottom. If you're going to bake, put two thirds of the coals you have on the top and one third on the bottom. And if you're going to roast, then kind of have it an even 
even mix. So I'm not really counting, but I'm just going to judge. And here is my lid lifter. It's a very great tool to have. last about an hour and if you have something that needs to cook longer than that then you need to put it in the uh, you need to get some new coals so another cool thing with the lid lifter is that about every 15 minutes it's good to rotate the Dutch oven a quarter of a turn to the right and the lid a quarter of a turn to the left to keep things cooking evenly so while that's cooking let me tell you about some Dutch oven care to season a Dutch oven. So sometimes the Dutch oven will start getting orange and um, rusty. And to season it, you can just take an SOS pad and scrub it really well. And, and then put Crisco on the inside and the outside and stick it in your oven upside down, both the lid and the Dutch oven for at 350 for an hour. And then when you take it out, let it cool. And then you can spray it with the Pam and it's ready to go again. One of my Dutch ovens I found up at a cabin it was super rusted out and so I had to do it a couple times and it's as good as new we're, we're using it today but if there is some extreme cases where it's so rusty that you need to take it to some sand blaster company and blast it out but it'll still be good as new when it's all seasoned and ready to go if you're gonna use sugar anything with sugar like a dessert I would put in a liner and that'll make it a lot easier to clean to wash a Dutch oven, I've seen it done different ways, but the way I do it is I don't use soap, and um, I scrub it with one of these crocheted scrubbers that I use for my everyday washing dishes. Anyways, you can get them online. So I just scrub it with the scrubber, don't use soap, and then right away dry it, and then I spray it with Pam. I used to do it with Crisco or um, oil, but this is so much easier and it just seems to stick a little bit better. All right, let's go check our Dutch oven. So this one I previously cooked and I always, now when I cook with meat I use a, a thermometer so that things are not too overdone or underdone and for chicken it's 165. So at this point if you want you can throw some cheese on it. This cheese has been out in the sun for a little bit so it's, a, it's an already melted, pre-melted cheese. Now it's time to taste it. I'm gonna get a carrot. Tastes like love. I hope you try it. If you have any questions, come ask me. You know where to find me now.